Commission work session of April 3rd, 2024 to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank
Um, and obviously, we, you know, we are under the gun, you know, amongst our own fault, but, you know, we got to, we'd like to get to the, the final plat meeting and then get to, you know, a May um, letter of credit approval so that he can pull a building permit. Obviously, things can't get finalized, but we do not want to request a, you know, extension again. So we're trying to keep things moving forward, but I think he is putting good faith effort, again, paying fees and getting contractors out there to keep things moving. But, you know, we are where we are today. And obviously, Don might have some statements and welcome to hear all that. Okay, Don? Looks like the mile of train wreck right now. A little bit. You could turn it that right now. Yep, um, I mean, it's right next to the train track. <sighs> well, they unleashed that culvert, which is backing up water significantly to the west and just let it rip, which was not smart. So they ripped up their detention basin pretty good. Um, obviously discharged in the rose garden, which was a problem. Um, and then I, I saw Mr. Neubauer when I had a meeting here last week, I believe last Tuesday I ran into him when he was paying those fees and he said that they were almost done and he was going to give me a call or send me pictures when they, when they had it done. He hasn't said anything yet. So we haven't done a official follow-up inspection on it, but we have been out there since, and that release roughed his pond up bad. Yep. He's going to have to fix that. Yep. Like it's yep. going to be fairly substantial. And that's obviously on him, and, you know, that is, he's got to get it to the satisfactory of the town, to the satisfactory of everybody. Yeah, I mean, it's up to this board if they're going to allow you to move forward. Like, the, the plat's pretty much in order. We do have to come up with a letter of credit value based on everything they've submitted, everything that's been inspected, that's not that big of a deal. Um, so we can be ready in two weeks, but I don't know if you want to allow that with everything going on up there right now. You you can be ready? Yeah, we'll be ready. Okay. You have so two you have two different <coughs> figures here on uh, your final page. Uh, one is for $430,405, and then uh, it says uh, 473 thousand four hundred forty five dollars and fifty cents. Four seventy three would be the kind of what we call full freight. That'd be the hundred and ten percent of the estimated value of the public improvements. Um, we do have ad builds. We uh, public works will not complete a water surface inspection until it, everything's up to grade. So essentially needs to be a pavement. Correct. So they won't even get out there and do that. So um, that number will come down slightly but all the fronting improvements haven't been completed yet. Um, storm sewer to a point has, and water main to a point has. So that'll, that'll come down um, just based on what they've installed. But the MS4 of uh, $1,500, has that been paid? I believe so. Yes. I believe the, we, the fine we recommended has been paid. The MS4 initial fee has been paid. The 3% inspection fee has been paid. And I think that's it. Yeah, yeah he's, he's current as much as he can. Okay. And he is working with, I believe Paige will be sent to your bank on getting a letter of credit. Correct. So the biggest problem we have here is some uh, grading. Has to the to the site product. maintenance, soil erosion control is, yeah, he needs to get that under control. And with the weather the way it is, do you think you'll have it done in two weeks? Uh, I mean, that's, that's a, it is crushing. I mean, he is fully committed to do what he can. He obviously got his excavator out the next day or within days from our last meeting, but it's been pretty rainy. Um, and, you know, that's where, again, a very substantial letter of credit can hold his feet to the fire for all this to be clean, and he is committed to getting it clean. We also contacted Northfolk Southern for all those culverts on that line. So he's got one. They essentially drain all of Hanover Middle School's ponds on the west side. They're all in pretty terrible shape. So we contacted them to try to get their maintenance crews out there to clean them up. Because yeah, I think some of their existing culprits were in bad shape regardless before. Oh, yeah, I think yours is probably the best, but there's two down the line that are pretty rough. When you say bad shape, they're deteriorating? Uh, deteriorating, not maintained, full of crap, take a prick. Railroad doesn't, railroad doesn't do a lot to maintain the that was not, they don't have That to. was not because of us, right? no. that was prior to. Yeah. I think their pipe was partially buried in the first place. So. They're hard to deal with anyway. Yeah. Actually, to, to speak to that, um, yeah, the contractor did... Uh, tell my client that the on our site the the culvert was buried. I think there was just a four foot hole, so they didn't even see the, the culvert itself. Do they know why they were so far off the property? I still don't know why they were. Okay. I, I went out to the side. I actually got pictures. I don't know why. We staked the silt fence to be right on our property line. Yeah, I put it right you. next to the the ballast. <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you. I really couldn't tell you. And then maybe it is. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? 
So, I mean, we'll we'll have a letter prepared for two weeks if we if you choose to move on it, it'll be ready. Well, commissioners, <clears throat> have any comments? Well, I'd like to see all fire to get along, you know, where you're at with the cleaning this up. Yep. And so I think we can put you on the agenda, but if uh, you're not up to snuff with what we need, then uh, we'll have to defer. Sound good? That's, that's about as fair as you can make it, sir. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Touch upon his rose gardens, right? No, they have one on the their east line right before it goes into rose gardens, but mm -hmm. that discharges into rose gardens. <coughs> so they had a little sediment flush into their pond that they were directed to clean up as well. Okay. <coughs> okay. Number three, Bank Shots Bar and Grill. Rezone preliminary plat. Owner petitioner, Bank Shots Bar and Grill, Inc. 875 Berkshire Place, Creed, Illinois, 604174. Vicinity of 8120 Lakeshore Drive, Cedar Lake, Indiana, 46303. Petitioner is requesting a rezone from B2 to a commercial plan. Unit development, PUD, and a preliminary plat for a one lot subdivision. Yeah. Right. Mr. President, if I may, real quick, and if uh, Adam can attest to this a little bit further, but I believe I made an error in the agenda because if I am correct, the petitioner is going to be removing the request to a rezone from a B2 to a commercial plan unit development, and they'll just be seeking the variances from the Board of Zoning Appeals for what they will need variances for and just are seeking the preliminary class. That's correct. I, I was going to make that record if you didn't, so. Right. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, Attorney Ab Sword and Sword Law PC uh, here on behalf of the petitioner 337 West um, uh, 806 North Valparaiso, Indiana. Um, no, we've been in here multiple times on this, and um, I think now what we have in place and what was submitted to staff uh, for tonight's workshop session, um, and I do have Adam Calpine here with my Calpine Consulting as the engineer, is a proposed site plan um, taking into consideration the comments we got from the last couple of meetings, both on behalf of my client who's also here this evening, and myself the meeting prior to that, on um, just coming up with a plan for what we can do for parking based on town ordinance and let that drive then moving forward with getting this building back open to be a restaurant bar. Uh, and having that restriction in place. And so what you have in front of you um, as part of the submission is an 11 page um, packet. Really the, probably the primary folks for tonight would be page four of 11, which is the site layout plan that walks through what the revised parking and configuration is gonna be based on prior meetings. Um, to kind of summarize here, what we've been able to establish with this layout is 23 regular spots with one of those being an 88 next to the building. And then we were still gonna look at proposing that restricted four um, spaces for golf cart and motorcycles in that odd uh, corner in the southwest portion of the site, um, just west of the building and off the Foster Drive. Uh, we did not look at changing the one, or the, uh, one entrance that was two-way traffic because all the feedback we got from prior meetings is that is what the town would like to see not having any access off the Lakeshore Drive, so we have that control point. Um, and as staff kind of related to, to you, uh, at this point then, what we're gonna be looking at doing is just submitting for the variances that we would need with the underlying zoning, primarily being for the front yard setback. Uh, there is one kind of pinch point between the building um, from the ingress, egress in there. And then we also have to get a variance because they're gonna be utilizing a liquor license at this location from a use standpoint, and I believe that covers with the revisions of the variances that we're going to be submitting for without seeking a PUD. So, um, the other thing that you have, uh, 
in your packet tonight is site analysis that kind of goes through the preliminary design work for the compensatory storage underneath the parking lot. Um, there are rough calculations in there for how that's going to function, and there's also uh, drawings within the 11-page the packet that shows how that's going to get configured along with a proposed utility plan for the site. Um, I don't know that Don maybe has some comments on that. I don't think we've gotten an updated letter on that, just given this coming in last week. But if there are questions, I do have Adam here that can address those. Okay. <clears throat> Don, you got any comments? Um, I do. <clears throat> um, Ashley, can you just go over the parking requirements for this with how many tables, how many seats are allowed with, I think I'm counting 19 full-size spots? Going by the 19 full spot five, not including those four because that was not something that the Planning Commission was in favor of, including in that parking schedule, they could have a total of 38 seats. That include employees too? That would not include employees. So depend employees is one space for every two employees that is going to be on shift at a time. doesn't matter if they're part-time or full-time. So, that, so would, that might reduce the that number reduce, of seats? That would reduce the number of seats. To what? Joe, do you know how many employees you anticipate having? Two employees. Two employees? So. One more spot? They'd either need one more spot or they'd need to lose two seats. Two seats or one? Two. So they could either have 36 seats and then they have enough space for the 36 seats and the two employees, or they'd need to find another spot, or the planning commission would have to be willing to negotiate on that one spot. But given the planning commission's reluctance to do any type of parking change in the past, I doubt that would be on the table. Are those parking spots the uh, ordinance size, 10 by 20? <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, the regular spots are. The okay. only exception are those four golf cart and motorcycle. And then um, your exit is going to be a left turn only because we do not want them going through the residential neighborhood and they're leaving the bar and grill. Uh, that isn't currently in there because that's going to be the, the only way in or out, but I mean that could be designed to... Well, that, that was been requested for many meetings. So it, it needs to be left out only because we do not want cars or customers going through the residential areas. So when you come out, they can make a left-hand turn and go out to make sure. You want to address the sign? Sign could be posted definitely to, and then, you know, yeah, yeah, that they uh, are really required to turn left. Yeah. I don't think that's a big turn, but yeah. we need to have that. Yeah, I just think, that, I think it's just from a design standpoint, though. I don't know how you can actually steer that in there because you're going to have that be both. Well, I don't either, so. so, so yeah. but Science, I, that's why they have engineers in that. <coughs> so, you know, but that's what we're going to request or require. Okay. A, well, a, a triangle that you can't drive over. Would take care of that window down. That's your only ingress egress point, so you have to allow in. So you can't have a pork chop because you wouldn't feel allowed. Not, yeah. not in the center, but you could have a you could have a curve on the right side going out that went left. Yeah, but say somebody was coming south on Foster and try to make a left into it, how are they going to turn it? The drive through the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> that. That works if it's a restricted, fully restricted right in, right out, something like that. But when you only have one ingress egress point, that makes it super difficult. Uh, You'd have to do it by signage. You like the sign? That's uh, the only way to do it. I'm not crazy about a sign because just they got a sign by Taco Bell, and how many cars turned uh, off of 41 making the left in the Taco Bell? So. I mean, the other alternative is to make that a restrictive left out only with curb with a curb angle effectively or curb ge and geometry and, and put an entrance an entrance only off of Lakeshore Drive. That'd be the only way. You could do the signage with maybe an arrow on the pavement just to try to send that message twice. Well I don't know, we're not gonna hassle out here. Let them come up with 
with a solution and okay. bring it to us. If it's got if the only thing that's going to work is the sign, then you have to present it to us that way. If you can put a curb in or something, present it to us that way. That that's the only thing I can up. say, but we're not going to. Personal. Pardon? That curb will tear up our snow plows for sure. You'd have to depress it when it swings out into the gutter line so they wouldn't do it, so they wouldn't clip it. That's that's how the one on tier is supposed to be poured. So we don't have that problem. So what are you saying, Greg? I mean, it has to be specific or it becomes more of a problem than it does good, particularly with our equipment. Like if, if it's like Don says, and it's we can do it the pops versus ramming into it. Yeah, I mean I'd be okay with that. I like the sign. What? I like the sign. Whatever, whatever you think would be best, Don. It won't destroy the snow plows. In the past, there has been we can do it. Any trouble coming out on? Foster Street, it was, the main trouble was coming out onto North Lakeshore Drive, and I, I, I don't think it's going to interfere too much with the subdivision. Yeah, before anybody that was going through the subdivision was going through to uh, avoid the main yeah. thoroughfare. Right. A lot of them go through that subdivision now to avoid the roundabout. Yeah. yeah. In case you're not aware, he's a former chief of police here. That's another story. <laughs> well, uh, no stories. We're willing to work with you on this, so think about it and we'll give us some thought too, and we'll see what what happens. Because this isn't going to be ready in two weeks to get approval. So, right. You know. No, I just I just didn't want to necessarily go back to looking at design changes where we're looking at bringing cars and off the lake shore because it's kind of been pretty much. Well, we've been told that that's right. not yeah. a starter. Even, whether, even if it's one way and one way out from a traffic control <coughs> standpoint, you guys don't want it. So. Right. And I've got a lot of residents that are on my back that it looks so nasty there, but I told them there's a group of people in here working hard and uh, uh, out, the layout of it looks good to me. And I said eventually we're going to have a nice building there. Is the platform coming? Yeah, the platform is coming. Will the engineering plans be updated with actual survey? It will be. Okay. Yeah. I, before we got to that level, just with kind of the back and forth we've done on this site layout, we want to make sure that what we're kind of showing here from a parking number of seats in utilization is good before we get to that level. And obviously, put the signage in as far as the cold for control and traffic movement. That's an easy one for us to include, and we'll put that in with the next submission. So, but now I think we've got this pin now, so they have concerns on how we've got this laid out. You know, we can move forward and get it finalized. Now, I do have a question about where the garbage dumpster uh, is going to be. It's showing on there, west of the building, a 10 by 10 enclosure is showing it. Okay, so you're good with that? Generally, I mean, if they're only going to have golf cart and motorcycle parking there, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, I guess the reason I bring up the, the topo is that I think I've mentioned this in previous meetings. There's a, a large twin CMP old trunk sewer going through your northern boundary, and you're showing storm sewer kind of going through it to get to an underground system. I don't know if that's going to work. That thing's huge too, and it's massive. Yeah. Like it's it's mostly abandoned, but it's still active. There's not a whole lot going to it. You've got to ban it with oak shades, but... It's the Klein Avenue side of that subdivision that's still going through it, right? No. The only thing that might go through is a small line on Foster. But it was disconnected fully, and there's a, a main line that goes down Foster, then east on Lakeshore, then south, paralleling the condos. So, I mean, if they do what they do there, could that whole thing be abandoned? Could it be engineered? We'd have to look at it just to make sure nothing else is connected to it. But it would it would be substantial to get rid of it. Like it's I think they're two eighty four inch CMPs. I guess I've walked through it before. I thought of that. So we talked about that when we reconstructed that subdivision. I forgot about that. That's where the original drainage west of Havenwood used to right. go through. And it was disconnected just because it wasn't gonna be viable long term. That box that's <coughs> over there in the ground? 
No, yeah, there's a box that kind of junction chamber on the northwest corner right there. If you go out there, there's two manholes. You'll see it. You can pop them up. It's a huge junction chamber. That's the start of them. And then it heads east, and then it turns southeast, and then it actually hooks into one of our larger junction chambers. So it's it's online. There's not a lot of drain to it, though, at this point. And the water that's on the east side of the building that's been ponding there, is that going to re be resolved? I think once we get grading, we'll have a better idea about how they'll, they'll drain it into their system. Yep. My only concern there is in the winter time, if we get a rain and then it freezes, then you have yeah. very slick conditions. In well, that's the primary parking area, so yeah. we don't they don't want that either. In there. Yeah. So it's part of the, you know, whether we're going to be looking at slight modification of how that underground design is going to work in light of the location of that. That's going to have to be considered too because we don't want to find over there. Yeah. I guess my point for pointing out topography is that we're not going to pick it up until we see that stuff. So we yeah. don't even review it. Okay. So it's good for discussion purposes, but it's not complete yet. I'm glad we're moving forward on this. I'm glad you have something here that fits. Yeah. And. Uh, you know what happens in the future happens in the future, but uh, seems like small, small snags. Right. Possibly. And for your your buffer, you're going to put up a fence, six foot square fence. Yeah, I think um, what we got in here right now was identifying a fence because there's just not enough room right. between the property line right. what we need for the pavement to really do any kind of landscaping. But if there's the opportunity to incorporate like a creeping vine or something into the fence, we talked about that. I think once we get to looking at the design layout with topography with the drainage and all that, there might be some changes there. We, could, we can look at all those options. Yeah, as long as we have a buffer, yeah. you know, we can work with that. And, uh, <laughs> Anybody else? Building anything? No, I haven't had a chance to have the building department or inspectors take a look over this over. Uh, it came in Friday morning, and just our building department meetings are always Thursday morning, so I haven't had a chance to have them take a look at it yet. And we were closed Friday, so we were closed that presented Friday. a little bit of a problem on our part. Yep, usually I try and remember far enough in advance so I can make sure everybody's aware of getting things to me today early. And I did not remember until Monday afternoon last week. I'm glad we have something to move forward on. Yeah, I, I agree with Ferry. It's just been a long way to come, but uh, it's shaping up and it's limited space, limited you know, property there. So um, I'm glad to see that they're working something out and, yeah. and get this back on the, on the books and a, a viable business in town. So yeah. if there's nothing else, then I guess we'll see you in the, in the next month for the work session and see where you're at. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Number four, Joyful Acres, uh, final plat, owner petitioner, Lindsay Porter, 6425 West Highland, 41st Avenue, Cedar Lake, Indiana, 46303. Vicinity of 6425 West 141st Avenue, Cedar Lake, Indiana, 46303. Petitioner is requesting the final plat for one last subdivision and a waiver from the 30 day requirement between preliminary plat and final plat with the town with zoning signatures until after the 30 days. I'm going to have Ashley explain that after Jack says what, what he's got to say. Sure. Um, we were here in front of you last month uh, to do a one lot subdivision on this 6.1 acre parcel. Um, there was a house on there that was taken down. There was a number of petitions that were filed for BZA. Those have all been withdrawn. We're just proceeding with this one last subdivision. Um, administratively, that's a two-step process. It's the preliminary plat and the final plat. And so we are before you with our final plat. And um, we'd like to have that heard in two weeks. And um, i to ask you as far as the specifics. So our uh, part of
part of our planning requirements is that there's typically supposed to be 30 days between when the preliminary plan is approved by the planning commission and when the, the final plan is brought forth in front of the planning commission. The preliminary plan was approved at your March 20th meeting. The April public hearing would be seven, April 17th would be three days before that 30 day period. So what they're requesting is that the planning commission allows for them to proceed forward with the final plat. We withhold signatures on the prime, on the final plat, which means they can't be picked up or recorded until after that 30 days is passed, which would be April 20th. We'll it is Saturday. So, no so they, they wouldn't be able to take it up until that the Monday after the April 17th. Can you upgrade down? I don't mind that. Yes. I'll get the same thing. I'll so actually all you're asking for is a three-day extension per se. Yeah, because otherwise then it puts us into the May meeting before we could uh, have the the final plat heard, which, you know, now we're talking almost nine weeks uh, of time. So okay. it's, a, it's an accommodation that there's, there's been times where we've, we've heard uh, primary and final at the same meeting and just deferred that 30 days. So um, it's, it's obviously your discretion. Yeah, on paper, and what you said, that paper scared me away. Yes. Go on yeah. here, but her, her explanation just seemed good. Uh, Don, do you have anything uh, on this? Or? Not at the moment. We're still getting through the review, but we don't anticipate any issues for two weeks. It should be okay in two weeks? Yeah. I, I thought I had a letter that said you better than your comments, actually. Did I? Yeah. Well, you got me then. <laughs> well, we <laughs> okay. well, it's here. I'm pretty sure it's here. Preliminary plan. Yeah. I mean, if you have comments, we'll address them definitely. Yeah. But um, yeah, this is dated March 15. Preliminary. Oh, that is preliminary. Yeah, that is. Ha. There you go. All right. You've been out there. You've yeah. been out there looking. I at tried. The I tried to catch down. But not recently now. Why? Okay. <laughs> well, I just there's a lot of, of fill there. She can tell you about I that. Can, I can address that. So. Last fall, a correction notice had been put on the property, which is what started the whole process with this property. The, there had been a basement foundation that was left over from the unsafe house. The unsafe board preferred that it be removed, but the previous owner wanted to keep it because he planned on rebuilding in it, even though it was not really uh, determined if it was even going to be rebuildable. So they allowed the previous owner to fill it in. When these people, when the porters purchased it, they have actually made the property safer by removing that unsafe foundation. So that's where that bill came in. It, as part of all the stuff that they were required to do to correct it with the building department, we told them they had to fill in that hole from that unsafe foundation that they removed. And with all the earthwork that had been done and with the wetlands that is located on that property, we told them that they had to put up that erosion control that built fencing because we wanted to make sure that we're not going to have any sediment from what they're doing impacting that wetland back there. So all that stuff is there on the request of or corrections from the building department to the current owner. Okay. Any other comments, questions? No? I have no issue with the three days of credit. Pardon? I have no issue with the three days of credit. No, either. Three, three day extension. I mean, sounds reasonable to me now that it's been explained. For sure. Um, well, then, uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, and yeah. that'll be continued upon Don's review. He's got yeah. a review yeah. done of that, and we'll move forward. Oh, you're right. All right. Great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Number five Dairy Queen site plan order. Tim Vineyard, 9917 West 133rd Avenue, Cedar Lake, Indiana, 46303. Petitioner, Hamster Builders, 12028 North 200 West, Wheatfield, Indiana, 46392. Vicinity of 9917 West 133rd Avenue, Cedar Lake, Indiana, 46303. Petitioner's request for site plan approval for additions and remodeling for the existing Dairy Queen. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Ted Vineyard. Sorry, um, it's um, we are working to address the issues that we had with the um, detention basin. So we submitted a report that um, 
should have resolved or at least brought to light what we need to do for that. Yeah, we just got it on Monday, I think. Okay. No, I haven't looked at it yet. Oh, okay. Um, well, um, that's Adam, do you want to address any of any of what you what you did do to address yeah. not concerning that? Yeah. Oh, thank you. And yeah, I understand. I'm still looking at it, or haven't looked at it. Yet. Um, your so name in the name name name. Oh, I'm sorry, Adam McAlpine, 398 East, 400 North, Valparaiso, Indiana. McAlpine Consulting. Um, so I have been hired um, to assist with the preparation of a stormwater drainage report for the Dairy Queen improvements. And, and my understanding is that due to the, the nature of the improvements, uh, it prompted the stormwater drainage ordinance requirements to be followed. And the Dairy Queen site does not have any existing storm sewers. Everything sheet flows to the south and into that woods that's to the south of the Dairy Queen. And so now with the updated drainage report, we're uh, familiar with the site. There's a shed at the southwest end and then there's the Dairy Queen. Uh, I can only speak to um, the, the drainage improvements. Um, Scott Haslett is here and he can speak to the building and the site and the circulation. Um, this is a detention pond that's at the, going to be in that wooded area. We'll clear the trees, um, hollow out a detention pond, put an outlet structure within that pond that will outlet to the neighborhood the storm sewer system to the south. So it's fortunate that they have installed a storm sewer system within an easement and, that, and they're much lower. Um, this is not a very significant detention pond as far as size goes because it's a pretty small site. But we'll dig swales um, on the west and the east sides of the parking lot. There's all the shed to the south and get it into the detention pond. And then it will outlet into the storm sewer and it will be a controlled release. So, but uh, but I'll, I'm sure we'll have revisions and we'll work through all of those with your engineer. At least you get to it. Okay, so you still need to review the plan. Yep. Yeah. Like I said, I think we got it on Monday, right? Okay. Thursday. Thursday? We got this one on Thursday. Okay. Afternoon. Potential for you to get this reviewed before the next public meeting? Do my best. Well, update, 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 updates are good. Yeah. I'm not pushing you, I'm just. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. It's not a big review by any means. It's going to be pretty quick. So, but yeah, I'm, I glanced at it before the meeting, but I haven't gotten into it. Okay. It says, uh, it says existing shed. Isn't that a two car garage? Yes. Okay. For storage. So we're just expanding like the kitchen, area, right? There's um, the kitchen, the whole store will be remodeled from interior as well as upstairs. So they're adding, um, it allows us to redo our kitchens, make them hot and cold kitchens, make them more efficient. Uh, so there's that change as well as the additional storage interior. And then we take our cooler freezers outside as opposed to being inside. Well, it has one thing <coughs> right now, but the interior cooler will do all that. No more seating, or you're not increasing seating. No. Seating is going to stay the same. Right. Parking is stay the same. Uh, we're just uh, looking at expansion, remodeling the kitchen, and expanding for storage and, and the kitchen. Yeah, changing all the finishes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Covering. It says here you're removing the existing concrete to the north. Yeah, so we're going to cut the front half of the existing patio off. Yeah. Because it's just. Feel like it's too big. Okay. So we're going to take the front section of it. It's almost about half of it. So, like John said, there's no more seating. No. Okay. All right. And as I said before, they own 10 stores and they own one in Wamata. They got rid of it and then they put one in uh, Winfield. So, they still have 10 stores. Yeah. Good project. Any other comments? And I worked at the Dairy Queen here in town when I was a kid. 
That's where I start. And they're still fixing those mistakes, Bob. Well, you know, <laughs> Ed Booty was ran the place. He was our chief of police and had of state police. And uh, after we closed at night, he'd say, Bob, we've got to go in the back and eat some mistakes. <laughs> We're pretty good at with the site plan at a building department level. I've gotten no comments or feedback really bad from the inspectors. They seem pretty okay with what they're proposing. Yeah, I think the pond just needed to be tuned up. So hopefully I can get through this. We'll be set to go in two weeks. So hopefully you can you can get it reviewed and get you moving. Okay. Here's the one. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that one. All right. Well, it's all contingent upon Don getting his review done of, of what you have to do to the uh, retention pond, and then we can move forward on this. And uh, I'm sure all the construction of that is pretty pretty normal as far as the expansion and that. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, you know, if he gets it done in two weeks, you'll be on the agenda. If not, right, so then I'll let us know when you get to it, and then we can kind of make sure we're prepared for the. Sure. Right. It's really and we will know next Friday. Yeah, I'll know by next Friday and can let you know or um, Kurt know whether or not it's going to appear on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for your patience, too. Thank you. Number six, permanent plant and site plan. Owner petitioner, store safe of Cedar Lake, LLC, 5301 Dempster Street, Suite 300, Skokie, Illinois, 60077. Vicinity of 13649 Wicker Avenue, Cedar Lake, Indiana, 46303. Petitioner is requesting a preliminary plat for a one lot subdivision and update dated site plan review for an existing storage facility. Hi. Hi, Jack Halls from DBG, representing the petitioner. Uh, Jim is in the room. Jim was in front of you uh, two weeks ago and was talk, uh, three weeks, close four weeks ago, right, actually, where we did, we did a work study on uh, this particular project where we talked about the proposed building that we would like to put on the property. And there's a lot of conversation about various things on the site. Um, one of the first things we need to do, though, is create a one lot subdivision. And so that is the petition that's in front of you this evening is, is strictly the, the creating the, taking the meets and bounds parcel of the existing storage area and the meets and bounds property of the parcel that's up front and adding them together and making a one lot subdivision. Um, we're doing a primary plat, um, and, which is the petition for tonight. Uh, you will have upcoming on a, a future agenda the site plan for this and also the final plan for this. Uh, so that's uh, what we have in front of you. We've got a review letter from Don um, on this matter also too, so entertain your comments. Yeah, we issued a letter on April 2nd on comments for Keesley Minor, so uh, we should be good in two weeks, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't think this is going to be. A, you know, the, we know where the sanitary sewer is because uh, we did the subdivision uh, to the south. Um, we put some additional easement provisions on there um, that may or may not be needed. Sometimes we add easements through this process, so we'd like to keep those easement provisions on there. Um, me and Don are in the process of talking about the existing detention facility that's there that'll come up with through site plan. If, um, if it's needed, we'll add it on the final plat when we do that site plan. Um, it's not something where I'm going to show necessarily at this point. Um, and then a, a correction on a, a street name. So it, it's, it's pretty minor stuff, really. So we'll have that taken care of probably before the end of the week here. So. This is that 18 lot subdivision south of Dick Hem and Sons. This is just north of it. Oh, north of yeah, so this is this is the storage. Oh, the storage unit to the north. north. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the 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 existing storage is on a meets and bounds parcel that was in the county. 
and then there is a small rectangular shaped piece that lies on the northwest corner, which is where the proposed building that we talked about last month is going to go. But in order to pull a building permit and to make this whole site as one site, we need to do this one last subdivision. And that's the place that sometimes, I guess, empty a storage shed out and sells stuff out there in the front? Yeah, I think that's probably what um, the, the former owner, I don't think that, that's in his business model to, to do that do kind they, of thing. Okay. But, um, I can confirm that yeah. it's the previous owner. Yeah, he had a nice, <laughs> nice uh, picture of the proposed building. Yeah, yeah that, that was at the last month's meeting, right. and that's still all in process. So we're, we're working on that. Um, we also have a BZA petition in front of you. We'll be here next week uh, to talk about some of the matters that came up at the last meeting regarding screening on the north line and those kinds of things. So, so all we're concerned about now is cleaning this up and making it one lot subdivision. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Any other comments? Yeah, we're good with the primary plan. This is climate controlled. This is totally climate controlled. Yeah, okay. so it's okay. the new business. That's what I thought he had said. Nice one. Yeah. No other comments? Right. Two weeks. See you yep. in two weeks. Thank you guys for advertising stuff. Yeah, I'll get it off to you Number seven, Keith and Carlin, preliminary plaque. Owner, Jeffrey Thomas and Julia Faith Carlin. 5030 West 100th Lane, Crown Point, Indiana, 46307. Petitioner, Corey Keith, Yonika Design and Build, 2700 Valparaiso Val Street, Unit 1506, Valparaiso, Indiana, 46384, vicinity of 6949-70 West Hunts, 6th Avenue, Cedar Lake, Indiana, 46303. Petitioner is requesting preliminary plat for a one-lot subdivision for a single-family residential home. Good evening. Name and address, please. Good evening. Corey Creek, Unique Design Build, 2700, Valparaiso Street, Unit 1506, Valparaiso, Indiana. Uh, we're here tonight to request a preliminary plat approval for the one-lot subdivision. We were here last month and uh, kind of discussed what we were looking to do on the property in question. And I know that the paperwork has been submitted for everyone to review. And uh, Stu is here from Taranga as well to answer any questions that are. Stuart Allen, Taranga Surveying, 907 Ridge Road, Monster, Indiana. To answer if there's any questions of anything you need to clear up or. Sure. Just a little bit of history. That that road was all when I was a kid was always called Vermilion, but they do call it 126th. And that curve area there, we call that Snake Curve. Yeah. Snake Curve Estates. Those are Crown Point addresses over there too, aren't they? The, the Hodgepodge makes them Crown Point to Cedar Lake. It depends on what side of the road you're on. <laughs> I think so. It's amazing how people don't understand that. Yeah, there's this Crown Point address. But yeah. And and the United States Post Office, Crown Point Post Office, oh, no, it doesn't. has the rights to it, and they won't relinquish it back to Cedar Lake. No, their address is Cedar Lake, what do you want to build? Uh, Don, do you have anything on us? Uh, we'll have a letter out to Stuart tomorrow. It won't be a problem in two weeks. Okay. That's good news. Yeah. Commissioners have anything? I don't. I'm glad this is moving along. Yep. After building on that little triangle part, right? No. Uh, no, no, no back that's not the part they're building. Yeah. Building back, back in place. here. Yeah, okay, the blue. Okay. Mine's not covered. My tent is right <laughs> here. Yeah, I got so, it. I got okay. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the structure is going to be. It's okay. Well, if there's no other comments, um, see you in a couple weeks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bring your hammer and nails. Appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Number eight, Kubu, Flamurai Flat. Owner, Martha Ann Kubu. Trust. Trust, 
Dated 13192-13305, Moore Street, Cedar Lake, Indiana, 46303. Thank you, Bob. Petitioner, Brian Kugel, 13305, Moore Street, Cedar Lake, Indiana, 46303. Vicinity of 13135, Moore Street, Cedar Lake, Indiana, 46303. Petitioner, requesting a preliminary plat for one lot subdivision with one outlock. Name and address, please. Uh, Brian Cubel, 7600 West 136 Court, Cedar Lake, uh, requesting, uh, we're splitting up some property here, um, not changing anything as far as structural or anything like that. He will explain what we're doing, <laughs> so I'll take it from there. All right. Uh, Stuart Allen, Tarango Surveying, 907 Ridge Road, Munster, Indiana, 46321. Um, so I have a, a drawing. I think you guys, have, everything's been submitted uh, to show what's going on here. But basically, we have this existing building structure here. It's on the north side of the property. Um, this parking lot is not uh, large enough to uh, for the zoning. So it, he's going to have to go through a variance next week uh, to allow that out lot to be an out lot and have just parking on it, no building. <clears throat> and have restrictions of that forever, basically. Um, so it'll just be a parking lot, which obviously, Parking's an issue uh, in this area specifically, but um, this particular building, um, the number of parking spaces will fit with the number of chairs that are going to be in there when they're done with it. So it's the uh, number of parking spaces there are, but uh, so it's going to be, I think, uh, number of chairs in there will be. Uh, so that's whatever the minute. Min, min. What kind of business is this? It, it could be a restaurant. Uh, it could be, but it, you don't know. It's going to be probably like a carry out pizza. That's one of the people that we're what looking at. It. Yes. But there could be, actually, there could be more parking added. There is some room on the grassy area. I don't know if you included it or not. Uh, well, at this point, the, he, we're just concerned about he's requesting what right. parking is there now. If, right. he, if he wants to add a seat, he'll have to come back in front of the board. Correct. To, to to let that happen, but at this point right now, it's for every two parking spaces, there's one seat. Um, there's right. going to be two employees at the most there, so that would be. Are you selling that? Or are you leasing that? Or uh, it, possibly it's up for sale. Okay. okay. Is that the old so you, modern so, man? So you want yeah. to? That's the old modern, modern man. Yes. Yeah. 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 What it is is, I mean, so what, what you know what I'm, my thinking is? There's too much land there. To go with that building. Right. Mm -hmm. So the parking for the shopping center that we own, it would make sense to leave the bottom half, which it, it's already been divided. You just want to sell what, what that business is going to be. Where that, where that foot rail fence is I have now, if you drive over there, that's exactly where I want to leave it. Makes sense. But if anything goes up, we'll go with that building. The down, where I've already paved it, yeah. was going to go with the parking for the shopping center. Makes so sense. So I have more, yeah. yeah, because it makes sense to have all that. It's going, if I sold that building and with all that, it would be like a waste of yeah. land and it's too valuable for parking. And they so they also, uh, uh, when uh, Project Love Food Pantry was building a new building, they let us use that building at uh, no cost other than paying the utilities until we got into our new building. I remember that. But it, as Jim said, it was an old laundry man. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what it's going to be. We have some interest on uh, different things, but uh, yeah, they'll have to come in front of you guys no matter what. Anyway. Well, the, yeah. the main but, thing is that if it's a restaurant or some sort of seating, the parking will be appropriate for that. Sure. So, yeah. We have any concerns, Don? Not right now. I owe him a comment letter. We'll talk. Okay. Similar to the last one. Should be okay, though. Should be okay in two weeks? Any other comments? Building department, anybody? I don't have any. No. Um, in addition to the variance that um, Stuart referred to, we're also going to go ahead and have them get the developmental variances. We're going into two separate lots of the building setbacks, how far it is from the existing building. So we're all then conforming by way of approvals from the appropriate board. <laughs> the building space will be on the, the shopping yeah. center has been updated and uh, that would be an improvement up there now, but it's been kind of left behind it there for the modern man. So. And they've invested a lot of money in it compared to when we had the food pantry, got a new roof and new windows and 
uh, stuff like that on there. We have some interest in it. So my, my goal is to get a good business in there and then use the bottom half for parking for the shopping center and move forward. Whenever okay, sounds good. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Right. When anything comes in for the building department, it, it will be vetted in accordance with the zoning ordinance for parking and that it meets sure. the zoning for that area. Sure. Okay, thank you. Number nine, Shelley Development, Flemery Flat, Owner, Cedar Lake, 133 LLC, PO Box 677, St. Town, Indiana, 46373. Petitioner, Shelley Development, PO Box 677, St. Town, Indiana, 46373. Vicinity of 5604 West 141st Avenue, Cedar Lake, Indiana, 46303. Petitioner is requesting a preliminary plat for Lake. Side South Unit 1 for a total of 34 lots and 4 outlots. Hello, Jack Halls from DVG, representing the petitioner this evening. Uh, Jack is probably on his way, so if he walks in the door, we'll, I'll let him take over. Um, but if he's wanted to be here, then um, I know what he wants, okay. wants me to say. So, <laughs> um, so this is a this is Unit 1 of Lakeside South. Lakeside South is a large PUD um, on the north side of 141st, south of the Lakeside project that is on 131st, 33rd, excuse me. Um, we've done this Unit 1 as a primary plat so that we can uh, fine-tune the engineering. We've been doing a lot of the engineering uh, for the whole subdivision, but we're right in a position to submit that whole package. Um, there's a lot of storm sewer design, a lot of water main design for 200 acres, uh, but in this particular case, it's a 24 acre parcel. Uh, we're able to do the detention pond for that unit uh, right here in, within the limits of the subdivision. So uh, we first decided to proceed with uh, submitting the, the final engineering for this unit and do a primary flat on this unit. Um, the unit includes uh, a mix of the different products. There is um, nine of the single family homes. That is lot 388 through 396, as we recall as part of the PUD. Those are the 80 foot wide lots. They're very similar in a product type to the original um, the Lakeside project to the north. Uh, lots 397 through 408. Those are the 70 foot, 70 foot wide, um, zero maintenance. They're homes, uh, single family homes, uh, slab down grade type of a construction. Um, lots uh, 380 through, or excuse me, 580 through 592. Those are the paired villa lots. There is, I believe, 13 of those. Yes, 13 of those, so 26 units there. Um, this whole plan is exactly what you've seen uh, in, in front of you over the last number of months. There's, there's no changes to the land plans. Um, as far as the engineering goes, there's, you know, you're going to say there's a big long list of things that Don uh, submitted as far as his review letter, and he did. He's very thorough. Um, I would say 90% of them I found to be um, typographical in nature. Um, I've addressed all of those comments already. He, has, he hasn't seen them, but I've got a, a checklist of all the things that I personally am doing the work. Um, so I know that you know 90% of the comments are already ready to go back to him. So he'll have that. Look. I anticipate that by Monday at the latest, you'll have a resubmittal that addresses all of the comments that are addressed on here. Um, I know that um, uh, probably the couple of the biggest things are the, the water and sewer, and um, Don and Jack have been um, discussing those matters with Public Works, and we're gonna, we've got to a resolution so I can get that on paper uh, today. So This is part of uh, a total of 550 homes that will build in that the yeah, so this, yeah, so the Lakeside South PUD is... And uh, 34 are lots. Tell me what the four outlots are. So the one of the outlots is um, the detention pond. Are you able to put the flat on the 
on the screen, maybe. That's all lot A. Huh? All lot A. All lot A. So, and actually, if I can approach, I'm, I'd like to give you another supporting document, which would be helpful, I think. The outlots are the detention and the existing pond in the park? Yeah. Okay, and so the one is 4.5 acres, and then the one is 10 acres, and uh, then you, you got an existing pond, and then the park of 7.7 .7 acres. Yeah, so um, outlot A is the detention area. Outlot B is the area that's along 141st. We have about a, I want to say it's 50 feet or so between the right of way and the lot of that area, as you can see on the plat and also on the, the picture that I presented to you, uh, which is the landscape plan that we're proposing, uh, is, a, is a landscape firm. Um, and then, I'm, I'm not, oh, one of the outlots is the, the parking area that's in the, um, in between the, um, the pair of villas. So you see that those uh, half a dozen or a dozen parking spaces in there. That's an odd lot there. And uh, oh, the other one is is right next to Lakeside. Yeah, right, right there. So Lakeside Boulevard is intended to be um, probably dramatic would be a way I would put it. Uh, right now, when you look at that field, you see a, a lot of farm field that's pretty flat. You know that's. Um, at the entrance there, we're proposing 12 to 15 foot tall berms. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you approach this subdivision from 141st, it's going to look significantly different. Um, and part of that is because we have large detention facilities that we have to build. Um, and also, um, another shilling subdivision that you may be familiar with is in uh, the town of St. John, uh, the preserves. And that subdivision has a lot of uh, character that's created with berming on the perimeter. And that's one of the features that they want to bring to this subdivision, is they want to um, create an, a, a style and atmosphere. So the, the front entrance, there's two berms on either side. There's berms on the 141st. There's berms, so there's no lots that actually touch Lake or or you know, Lake, Lakeside Boulevard, so that single, the, the duplexes between the boulevard and those duplexes will be eight foot tall berms. That'll be landscaped, and you can see that on the landscape. Um, then there'll be a, a, a gap in the berm, so you'll be able, as you're driving down the boulevard, you'll be able to look out over the water. Um, there's fountains in there. And then when you hit the, um, the other products, up on the north side of Lakeside Boulevard, again, you'll have two eight-foot berms there on either side, north to south of that intersection of Superior, which will so create kind of a, an, an atmosphere where the, the boulevard is the main traveled way and the, the, residences, the residential area is kind of set off, creates an uh, aesthetic. Um, you'll see that in the future, as part of the PUD, they did commit to doing some park improvements. And so on the other side of Lakeside Boulevard is that park. And there's there's a, a 10 foot bike trail that we're actually starting, which will run along the um, south side of the berm on 141st, will cross the road, and then it will meander up through the park on the uh, east side. There's a top lot we're proposing to put the pedestrian crossing in the mid-block area there, so it will um, be, be easier to kind of control traffic at that point. Um, and then that's also where the, the, the playground facilities are going to be kind of in that open space. You'll be able to 
when you're at that park enjoying, you know, playing with the kids or whatever, across the street, across the boulevard, which will have trees and be fully landscaped and decorative lighting, all of those kinds of features are going to be there. You'll be able to see them across into, into the, the open water of the pond. The pond is a six to one side slopes. Um, so we're not going to be fighting these three to one side slopes. Um, you know, that many times are done because we are tight on detention. Uh, we decided in this subdivision we wanted to um, take advantage of those as, as features. Uh, we wanted to put uh, around the pond between the top of bank and the rear of the lot. You'll notice that there is about 20 to 25 feet of green space that will be relatively flat so that if you wanted to take a walk around the pond or you know there's just it's just creates a, a, a different a nicer aesthetic a nicer feel to the subdivision so um, you know I've got a lot of work to do between now and Monday um, and you know it's some kind of important that we uh, proceed with uh, getting some things done we want to be good partners with the town and so we are uh, committed to doing that and uh, look forward to your comments that bike path also goes up by the park and then up towards the north. Yeah, so this this uh, bike path ultimately will go up to the, uh, so just another half block north, which you'll see kind of in the gray here. Yeah, I see. Another half block north is a T intersection. And then you'll at that intersection is a much bigger pond uh, of open water. That pond is almost 10 acres. Yeah, it says 10 acres. And so the so yes, the bike path kind of meanders up to there. There's actually uh, parking spaces up there. You'll see that um, that that kind of come off so that you can if you wanted to drive your car to the park, you could do that there. Uh, this bike path also continues um, from from the park further west. So if you see this yeah, for additional this area, yeah. So this so it, it's continuing to go <coughs> as you the, develop the other areas. Yeah. Um, the intent is with this this phase is to do full improvements on 141st. So we're doing uh, a left hand turn lane in, we're doing a, a right turn into the a dedicated right turn into the subdivision. You know is it necessary to have all those improvements for 46 houses? No. Uh, but we want to get the entrance done so it looks finished. It looks looks like it's great. You know, that's that's so we're investing that money up front to to make those improvements and so that we have and it's finished. We we don't want this to be something that um, is going to have to get tore up because we want to. Put a put this in, or we need to do that after the fact. All, all that stuff is wants to be done. Any roads uh, exit through Robin's Nest? So uh, the curtain, no, the PUD does not show any connection into Robin's Nest. Um, I know there was some conversation at the planning commission level. It's really a, it, it, there's been no change from what was presented as far as the PUD. Um, it was the feedback from this body at the time of the planning that there was not to be a connection into Robin's Nest. Um, there could be, and it's just a, you know, we did leave space that if that was ever a, a change that was required, but um, I think utility connections, there will be connections through that right away there, uh, very likely. Uh, we talked about that. We're, you know, one of the conversations we're having is, you know, how does the water system um, get good pressure throughout the whole system and, and one of the ways is through looping and uh, we're coming down Lakeside Boulevard from 133rd so that provides your main line but we need to have another secondary line so that right away in the Robins Nest is kind of a, a natural way to have that happen. And this uh, residence, is there going to be a buffer between the park and that or the residence uh, right the, between the existing pond and the park? There's a, a residence right there. It's not part of your property. That is true. Yes. So that's why, I mean, 
Oh, um, I mean trees there or something, right? There's trees, yeah, there's trees, there's screening. That, that existing pond is more like a wetland. Yeah. Um, that's there, so we're going to have our bike path meander around it, but we don't want to impact that wetland. Um, so you know, there's not really a whole lot of value of putting a lot in there. Uh, I mean, it's great from a perspective of, of that landowner. You've got a large park on the one side. There are berms uh, that kind of provide the screen. And then on the east side, there'll be the landscaping and stuff that will go there as well. And there will be exits off of 133rd where eventually you can drive from 133rd to 141st. Yeah, so, so if you drive up to this T intersection that, that's kind of showed right here, mm -hmm. so Lakeside, Lakeside Boulevard comes up a half a block further, it's a, it's a T intersection, which is Lakeside Drive. So it's a small arc and it goes right up through Lake, the main part of Lakeside and then goes out to 133. Right, yep. okay. Yep. And then there will be a connection on the original Lakeside Unit 3, I believe, right? Or, or is it Unit 2? Uh, into Robin Smith's? Yeah. That, yeah, so that one's actually constructed now. Right. Yeah, yeah so there's there's barriers up there, and those barriers are there to keep construction traffic from going into Robin Smith's, not to keep people right. from Robin Smith's going into Lakeside at this point. We want to kind of control um, our construction traffic through now, there. This, this park? And uh, Lakeside South, is that the park that was supposed to be with the Lakeside, the original Lakeside? Because they were always talking about, they were always talking about, you know, there was supposed to be a park in the reg, uh, regular Lakeside, phase one, two, and three. This park is what's required for, for this subdivision. Okay, but there's still going to be a park for... Um, I, I can't say. I don't know what the, the commitments. I wasn't actually, I was... I was a sub sub consultant okay. at that point. So it was a different engineering firm that did yeah. the plans for that. Needs that. to be vetted. There's a parcel. There is a parcel. There is a parcel there, but it was going to be for wells. Right. They have essentially been capped because the water quality wasn't good enough. I don't know what's going to become of that parcel. I still think it's owned by either Schilling or the developer. I, I don't know who's owned uh, by. I just know the residents were talking about things. They were yeah. parking and they hadn't yeah. the parked yet. No. That's a fair question. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not in a position to be able to answer that one. Yeah, it's part of unplatted right now. Yeah, so maybe it's intended to be part of. Yeah, I don't know what the intention is of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I I had a lady that I talked to that bought one of the houses. Okay. On 133rd, and she told I asked her. I said, "Why didn't you move?" She said, "The noise on 133rd was just too much, and I couldn't handle it." So she moved to Winfield. Mm -hmm. Well, on this on 141st, I think uh, we won't have that problem because we'll have uh, less traffic. Any, no, well, there might be less traffic yeah. at some point in the future. I can't I can't promise what the traffic will be on a. 141st, but I can say between lots 582, 583, 584, and 585 that there's going to be an 8 foot tall berm in a 50 foot green space between the rear lot line and the right line. So, and then landscaping on top of that. And so you're not going to have, that's like on the north side that you were talking about, 133rd, you're not going to have lots that back up right off to the right of way. I had a question. Uh, lot 396, right to the top of the where the gray area is. As, yeah. you, go, as you go toward the 10-acre uh, detention pond, what is that little menagerie of penciling on that lot, kind of up to the right? That's some creative line work that Mr. Um, Gary R. Weber came up with. What is it? The landscape architect came with. I, I really don't know what the intent is for that. Is it a, is it a park space? It, it, is, it is park space. Oh, sure. sure. It is, I, I can't I can't say what the intent of that feature is to be. Whether it's a gazebo it like or, a if just, or if it's just um, stonework. Gazebo like. Okay, I don't know. Well, that's gazebo like. Okay. okay. Yeah. Gazebo ish. Okay. It's, it's important. I do know this. It's important 
for the developer that as you're coming up Lakeshore, Lakeside Boulevard and you hit that T intersection, that you are able to see the open water. Because I kept crowding that area with lots, and he was like, "No, <laughs> you got to move. You got to move that out of there." So, very important for that that feature. Okay. Any other comments? Nobody. We'll see where we're at. I mean, our letter speaks for itself. That the water and sewer are the most important items right now. We want to make sure they're master planned correctly. This is yep. a this is a very important link to our new wells just south of here and our upgraded wells are off of that. So we're kind of going back and forth about how we're going to build it out. We're obviously doing it in phases here, but it has to work with our ultimate master plan. So, um, and, and you're working uh, with IDEM on our lighthouse water. We are, and this ties, it ties with everything like that. So. And eventually, and we've got the pipes going in there and then they have to put the pipes in on uh, their property and then we'll eventually have this all connected and it will eventually go to Crystal Oaks Water Tower. Yes, so not seen in this unit one layout is the kind of build out of the actual spine of the water main which will run all the way up to Lakeside North. Um, you can probably scroll through the engineering plans and show them. We have the engineering plans on that. We had dialogue with the Schilling group a while back, and they have two ends uh, around that one. Uh, one of them, I must have that thing correct. Yeah. That is our, um, we, what we don't have yet are the reimbursement agreements for the sewer or water. They're, they're in draft. We've been exchanged, Kevin Hunt and myself. Yeah. Uh, but that's critical because it's an element or a term of the development agreement. So all that legal stuff's got to tie together, too. Pretty close, but not, but not final. So you can see it on the TVs right now. That's the kind of western connection into the existing 141st transmission main. Um, this will you can't really see it on the paper. It would be blue, but yeah, down down here is where we connect with the water main. We run it through the subdivision and hit our unit. So we're we're doing a is on offsite water main to the to the west and also to the north because we're we're coming out of this subdivision and running all the way to Lakeside so that so that loop will be connected uh, between the, the water main that's on 141st that was just recently done by the town and the stub that comes down from Lakeside. Um, similarly, sanitary sewer we're running this all north up to the main interceptor sewers that was just recently put in uh, for Lakeside Unit 2. Um, so. Yeah, there's a lot of upfront utility work. Yeah, yeah, and actually done the part of this unit. goes all the way over up to Founders. So, I mean, those are the biggest things we got to get through, we like Jackson, Bottom Rock Meyer. We looked at that a while back. Yeah. yeah. So they got a lot of stuff all the way back there. Mm -hmm. And everyone else. Mm -hmm. They got all the stone okay. all the way back to the back five around themselves. Yep, that'll go in all the utility trenches. So, stone, piled up stone. What was that? Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that looks like what we agreed. So, uh, I'll be sitting on this then. Uh, you guys stuff to. We're going to push hard. You, you said you get back to me by Monday. Please wait till Monday. Um, <laughs> and then we'll uh, do our best to turn it around by next meeting. I mean, there, there's inevitably going to be some comments outstanding. Just, you know. A lot of stuff to go into this size of uh, subdivision for the first phase, um, but we'll do our best to get it to a point where we're all feeling good. At. I need to send them off to you, but I did get comments from Neil in relation to the yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just got those I yesterday. Thank you. Kind of Mr. President, Don, how realistic is it that you're going to get done what you need to get done by Monday? On, on Monday. Well, I'll get stuff on Monday. I got a week to review it from there. So I'll I'll give him stuff on Monday. He would have to look at it by Friday to make a recommendation. It, it's not it's not, we're, we're, it's not it's not disparaging of, of the description. It's reality, and this pretty important project in terms of those utility connections uh, may well be worthwhile having a special meeting to in three weeks. 
that would permit this to be presented standalone and considered. It's probably have to know tonight if that's going to happen for us. I mean, if we had to, it'd be May 1st. Yeah, yeah, first to, I don't want any more special meetings anymore than the rest of you. I, I saw the report from Don. It's pretty thick, pretty voluminous, a lot of detail. Um, and they've got, Jack and the team have a lot to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can set that. Back, back to my question. I mean, we can set that at the next meeting. we got time, right? If we come to the 17th. Okay, we have an alternative is to do it as part of your um, work session. Well, the, the issue is, is advertising. Right. Yeah. Let me calculate advertising. So, if we if we did a special meeting on the first, which is your normal work study meeting, we'd have to have it up by the 21st. So, theoretically, I could get it to you on the 18th, like we do for. I'm getting you stuff tomorrow for store safe. For their if you got to do it, shoot for that so we don't have to have a special meeting night. We're already uh, here I, for a while. Right. Yeah, that, that would be my purpose right. is to do it. If, if you're not going to do it, if you don't think you want to hear it in two weeks, which we're, we're committed to trying to make that happen, to making that happen, but I understand, you know, Don's got to review stuff that's coming in and it's a lot. Um, if May 1st works better, then we can just advertise for May first. That's, that's, that's just totally your call. Yeah, what you yeah well, no, that sounds like a good plan to me. And if the planning commission's direction is to advertise for a special public meeting and to have them at a, a May first special public meeting, I think theoretically get Jack everything tomorrow. That's the work session, right? That would be our next our next work session. Yes. Yeah, that, that's fine. Long as we're here already, and April third, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and I'm happy with. Uh, Schilling's, uh, they came in with 60 foot lots and we told them we didn't want 60 foot lots and they made them 70. He did everything we asked him to do, yeah. including yeah. the water line. Yeah, yeah. he certainly did. Yeah. Yeah. So let, let's use that as a plan and see if it can happen so, in two weeks. Good. Well, I, I guess, can, can, we, can, we, can we advertise for two weeks from now? Because we have to do the advertising tomorrow, basically. If we're gonna if we're gonna be on the agenda for for public hearing in, in two weeks and then be deferred. That's why I calculated it the way I did and asked. Okay. For it. Okay. I just want I just want to make sure I was straight. We're, we're planning on a public hearing that the public won't have direct notice of. Okay, so we're gonna we'll, we'll do notices for two weeks from now. Is that what you're saying? No, no, I, I, I'm saying May 1st. I think the direction but, is May 1st, have a special public hearing, and I will get you advertising for May 1st. Then we're not sprinting. We'll so then we're not, it's right. not even going to be on the agenda. Uh, and do it. it probably ought to be for, uh, for, 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 for ketchup, but it's not for public yeah, hearing. But not for decision disposition right. purposes. Greg kind of indicated you wanted to try Everybody understands what, right? uh, what's being I just what we're going to do is we're going to do is have a special well, meeting at the work session, the May 1st. and you're not going to appear in two weeks. I have no. Right, we'll be here for kind of a yeah. work Update. study to make sure we're still on right the right track. Update. And then two weeks, weeks later, at your work study meeting, we'll be here for our public hearing. Theoretically, I could have it on as an update item for discussion as an update item. Update would be great. Meeting. Yes. And for next for the next review, review his, his right. okay. work. He, He's going to update his letter return. It's pretty voluminous. He's going to take care of a lot of business between now and May 1st. All right, that all works for me. It works for everybody else. Yep. As long as we're not letting the inmates run the asylum. Where are we going? An idea I, like that. <laughs> I, I think this is, this is a project where you know we're looking at sorry timelines timeline as far as getting water main in the ground this year. Um, you know, sanitary sewer permits from when they're signed take 90 days at, at item, and then we want to order pipe and get it in the ground. So, you know, all that's all related together. So, you know, we're that's why we're talking about the timeline that we are. So, we appreciate that. Yep. Until Jack just turn around.
there. <laughs> He's gone. He hasn't been texting me, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you need him. I, I think you did pretty good on your own. Yeah, well, it's, it's his project, so I like to let him uh, leave the show if he can. So. Son of a bell. He's probably sitting next door watching on his phone. No problem with that. It's already built, huh? <laughs> okay, then. All right. That's what we'll do. Thanks, Thanks Jack. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> All right, did uh, anybody for Culver yeah, sign up? Show up? I'm not seeing the petition. Nobody online. Mm -hmm. So, how do we treat this? Then? What happened to that guy? Next month. I'll take it to next month. Send a notice. Next, next work session? Yep, May 1st. Okay. Because I, I really would, with the change in the site plan, I would like the site commission to have time to comment to the petitioner on that item. Okay, update item. Cedar Lake Stars, phase two, update. So I reached out to the Porter Brothers for the storage facility to find out when they plan on having uh, the paving done. They have reached out to their paving company. Right now they're working on uh, some stormwater stuff to get it all ready for when they final asphalt that phase two section. They are hoping to be on their book for the first week of uh, January, June. <laughs> First week of June? First week of June. Their expiration is June 15th. I thought as soon as the asphalt was hot, they were going to work. They're trying to correct some outlying storm water problems, or uh, not storm water problems. There's some storm water things that they have to do on that rear section or something. Well, as long as they yeah, they're, they're working on stuff to get it prepped in order for that pavement. Okay. Well, I say, as long as they get it. Yes, I have made them aware that this is their deadline and to please make sure they are working on it. Okay. Uh, Beacon Point West, Unit 5, Performance Center credit expires May 19, 2024. That will most likely extend, would be my guess, unless they, I don't think they're at their building limit yet. So, that might extend for six months, but it be rollover sometimes at the end of the year. Okay, Hanover Community School Corps performance center credit expires May 24th, 2024. No, nothing new on our end. Nothing new on my end, Jeff. Stuart left, so. I don't know. Yeah, we haven't received as built yet, and I know the school has been given everything that we've had that needed to be corrected on our end, so I will reach back out to the school and determine what it is that they intend on doing for the performance center credit. Yes. May next month, so. Mm hmm, we're going to find out. Number four, Perez, performance letter of credit expires June 14, 2024. To my knowledge, they intend on extending. And they're still selling it, right? It's still up for sale. We're told it's sold. Did it sell? I'd have to check GIS. I, I've not, or check with the utility billing department. I haven't heard anything about it selling yet, but most of the time when something closes, it goes to utility billing. Number five, make sure Cedar Lake stores phone center credit expires July 1st, 2024. If I remember correctly, this is their public letter of credit, the 7700 for the stuff that they need to do alongside 133rd. Not sure where they're at on that one. I will let them know it's coming up. Should be taken care of with their paving. So it'll be in conjunction with that, and then it should rotate to maintenance. I mean, that's 15 days after their deadline, so it shouldn't be a problem. Okay. So you would hope we would rotate in the maintenance second meeting in June. Number six, speaking point, unit three, maintenance center credit expires July 12, 2024. Uh, we need to do a field inspection and get them a punch list prior to expiration. We'll probably do that over the next month to give them some time to correct everything. Beacon Point East, Unit 4, Permanent Letter of Credit, expires July 25th. Did I just read that? No. 2024. 
Yeah, different. Um, this is the northern phase in Deacon Point East. Um, depending on how they get with their paving, it might rotate over, but I'm betting they're going to extend that one, probably. I'll need to check. I don't think they're that close to 80. Yeah, right. I'll need to check where they're at on their 80% percent build out too. Yeah, I'll bet they'll extend that one. Uh, right, number eight, Beacon Point East, Unit 1, performance letter of credit expires July 30th, 2024. Uh, I spoke to Jack Slager this afternoon about this one just to get an update. This is the one with the detention basin in the front. Um, they're doing some tweaks to the plans, um, but they're still anticipating it, having it done before July 30th. So I think he, myself, and Jack Holes are going to sit down about it soon. And we'll report back. Okay. Any public comment? Come up. Name and address, please. Sure. Robert Brusek, 14055 Theodore. I appreciate the Shilling development taking care of the pond, whatever you want it, behind our five homes there on Theodore Street. The question I have, and we're kind of concerned about this, is due to the last rain we had, the culvert downstream of that pond up for halfway was real was full, and so was north of halfway. Our question is, because they're getting close to the 80%, am I correct? Depends on which section. Which Some of those sections have already converted into maintenance and are already in the town's inventory. The tubes that go under the road. Hmm? Who is responsible for maintaining the cleanliness of those tubes? It'll be the town once they're accepted into our inventory. Right now, Unit 1 is not accepted yet, so there would be a responsibility of the developer currently. It, say that again? Um, right now, since it's still in performance, letter of credit, yes. they would be the responsibility of the developer currently. Once it, once it flips into maintenance and is accepted into the town inventory, then it'll be up to the town to maintain them. Okay, now north of Breakway, that pond was full, mm -hmm. and there appears to be a discharge point at the northeast corner of that? Yep, that's the restrictor. Who's going to be responsible for maintaining that because it's not under a road? Is um, that going to be the HOA's responsibility, or does the developer turn all that over to the HOA? There's a lot of confusion, and that's what I'm trying to figure out here. What's restrictor, the one? yeah, I mean... Technically, that would be part of the storm sewer system that the town accepts. Um, but it's also also in your operation and maintenance manual that's operated by the HOA. So it's kind of a dual, call it a dual responsibility. <laughs> so, <laughs> so who does what, when, where, and how, and why? If you know, it, this is, it's a little confusing because... Yeah. You know, um, getting some people together that are looking to run for the board. Technically, the restrictor is part of the storm sewer system, so it would be part of the town's inventory when it gets accepted. So, but it's also part. It's also every subdivision has what we call an operation and maintenance manual, which sure. is strictly related to stormwater ponds um, and items like that to make sure they're maintained, to make sure they're kept clean. clean um, and part of that, I believe, is an annual inspection of that restrictor. <coughs> okay. So I, I would say it's probably more on the HOA since it's related to the basin more so than the storm sewer system. Um, okay. That's how I would evaluate it, but I can see it both ways. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want a little mm -hmm. clarification. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hope you don't mind me going forward with any other ponds that are going in. Who's going to be responsible? Of I mean, the detention the basins themselves. No way is the town responsible for a pond then if it's going to us? HOAs usually, if I'm not mistaken, once they're, you know, except they're responsible like in Robin's Nest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a concrete swale that runs from, let's see here, is it from the south, the south northeast? Yeah. It, 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 wise, it goes out to the well after every couple of years it fills up with the little rocks and everything else. Sure, silt, so, yeah. Silt so, and then from cutting the grass it gets on there and it starts messing it doesn't go out on the soil and it starts flooding the retention pond. Yeah. So then we have to, you know, pay for someone to come out and dig up and clear out that con uh, concrete soil. Okay. So it goes out to the creek. 
The HOA does that. HOA pays for that. Wow. Yeah, the maintenance of the detention basin is HOA. And there's generally a clause that we've been including on flats lately that says, and we've had this happen in years past, where those outlets, taxes aren't paid on them, and then they go to tax sale, and then like a neighbor buys them. Oh, that makes me so angry. Yeah. So we, we, that, it goes right to the creek right behind Hanover House. It does. Yeah. Yeah, it okay. goes north and then turns immediately east. Right. So right. It, that, I mean, when we saw that when I looked at it that uh, when we had that rain, that was almost dry, and our ponds were really high. Well, really that's really high. what it's dry. That's what it's meant to do. It's supposed okay. to we'll collect it, hold it, and then slowly release it. It'll be open for the next rain event. And okay. Slowly fluctuates. Sounds the, good. Thanks, guys. I think, the, HO, I think the HOA instruction manual says that the guy closest to the fountain. Has to take care of <laughs> 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 He's not in the HOA. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other public comments? Always a white driver. Any other public comments? Anybody online? No, sir. No one online. Okay, our next uh, meeting is August 17, 2024, at 7 p.m. That will be a public hearing. We're adjourned.